Hey guys, it's Paul from Ementech and I'm here today to tell you about the new springs kit from Ementech for the Tenfoglio pistol. It is the competition springs kit and it's got a few nice bits and pieces in it to upgrade and bring your Tenfoglio, be it the stock one, stock two, stock three, to a better standard for competition use and just for normal shooting if you want to improve your trigger and improve the feel of the gun. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this stock, stock two, and before we do anything to it, we're going to just do a trigger pull test and see what the weight of the trigger is in pounds. And we'll go from there. We'll take it apart. We'll take the parts out of it. I'll show you how to do that because it's a little bit different to the CZ. And then we will be um, installing the Ementech Competition Springs Kit parts. And then we will do another trigger test and see what the weights are. So first things first. This gun has had a few rounds through it. It's not a new gun, but it does have standard parts in it. Let's see. I'm guessing from feeling it before, it's around nine pounds. And we're starting to pick that trigger up. And there she goes. So that's way over. Let's try that again. Okay. And let's put it in pounds. <coughs> Keep it straight. It's just it's just hitting the nine ten pound mark and then it's a bit over gently back to pounds 11 just on 11 pounds i'd say between the 10 and 11 pounds so let's begin to take this tanfoglio apart first things first you obviously want to make sure there's no ammunition around no magazine and the chamber is clear and we want the hammer back line up the dots in the frame and slide and just tap that slide stop to get it going and to get it out. The slide will then come off the firearm and we can take the guide rod out that's got the spring on it and the Tenfoglio stock 2 being a bull barrel also has a little bushing inside there which we can push out otherwise we can't get the barrel out. There's the bushing and the barrel comes out the front unlike the CZ which comes out from there. That's pretty much the big pieces. Now we're going to take the firing pin out and the firing pin stop and the firing pin safety. So we just push down on the firing pin and we can slide that stop plate off just like that. Watch out it doesn't go flying. Put your finger over it to catch the firing pin. There's the firing pin stop plate. There's the firing pin with the firing pin spring. So we're going to put that spring on the side because we're not going to use it again. The firing pin has a notch in it for the firing pin block. So this firearm has a safety mechanism in it where if the slide isn't fully closed in battery, it won't allow the firing pin to move it or lock it in position. So we just tap that out and there is the locking mechanism or the block that locks the firing pin and there's a little spring in there we're going to change as well. Put that on the side. And we also got a spring in the kit for the extractor. So we're gonna tap that pin out, the roll pin from the top of the firearm out through the bottom to remove the extractor so we can get to the extractor spring. We'll just use our two mil punch. And that roll pin pops out the bottom. We're gonna keep that. And when we pull this out, our extractor will be free. And there is the extractor spring. It's good to get in here now and again and clean out all the carbon because it can affect the extraction of the firearm. This one's got a bit of carbon in there and I am struggling to get that out. There we go. We got it. There's the extractor spring. Put that aside. I'd recommend you clean your gun properly. Give it a good clean with brake fluid and dry it off and get all that carbon buildup and deposits off the breech face, around the edges, in the slot where the extractor goes and where the extractor spring lives. Also clean down in there where the firing pin goes. Make sure there's no obstructions and anything to slow it down because that'll affect your ignition of your primers. Now we get to the bottom end of the firearm. We're just going to take these grips off. There we go. And we're going to drop the hammer and don't let it fall against the frame. Hold it with your thumb and let it go down softly. We've got to get the um, ejector block out or the sear cage out. It can be called both. Ejector block because the ejector is on the block or sear cage because it's the cage that encompasses the sear. So both terminologies are correct. To get that out, you need a sharp little screwdriver and you want to lift that leg 
hope you can see it, of the sear spring up and over onto the ejector block. There we go. And Tanfoglio, unlike CZ, have cut a nice little groove into the sear cage or the ejector block for that leg to sit in so it doesn't keep falling back into the slot while you're trying to remove the safety. With that long leg of the sear spring removed from its normal resting position where it locks the safety in position, we can now remove that safety just like that. And now the ejector block you can grab by the ejector and pull out like that. Now what's left in this firearm is the hammer, the disconnector, the trigger bar, the plunger and the trigger return spring which we're going to change a few of those components. There's also a spring in the mag release we're going to change. So let's continue. There's a little pin in the bottom here called a hammer pin pin. It's the smallest pin in the firearm. What it does is it stops the hammer pin from falling out from this end. So it's just a protector to keep it in position. We can just push that up like that and with our two more punch hopefully we can just get it to drop out. And there is that tiny little pin. We'll put it aside. Now with that out, we can remove the pin that holds the hammer in. Now this hammer will always be under spring pressure, the main spring, because unlike the CZ, you cannot load the spring in from the bottom of the firearm. It's loaded from the top. So now we've got that out, we can remove the hammer spring, and there it is. What's left to do now is to drive out the roll pin that holds the trigger in position so we can get the trigger bar out so we can get to the plunger or the lifter plunger which lifts the trigger bar up. The CZs have a lifter spring which is horseshoe shaped and it fits underneath the trigger bar. The Tanfoglios have this which has got a spring inside it and that lifts the pressure up onto the trigger bar from the bottom. So let's drive that pin out. Get it go. Get it going first. There we go. There it drops out. Make sure you leave that in there until you're ready to catch that trigger return spring. The way I do it is to turn the firearm upside down, cover all the holes, and pull that out, and it popped out the side. There's the trigger return spring. Now the trigger and the trigger bar will come out quite easily. There we go. And the last thing we want to take out is this plunger that puts the pressure on the trigger bar. And we just pull that out like a tooth with a pair of pliers. Just grab a long nose. Well, like a tooth. There we go. Just grab it and yank it out. And that's what it looks like. Now that we have that out, the mag release can come out. And this is ambidextrous. You can put it in from the other way as well. And I'll show you how to put that back together. It's quite interesting how it works. So we have everything out of this frame. We're going to take a quick break and we'll come back to you with how to install all the parts from the Ementech kit. Thanks. Hi, are we back? We're just going to go through the Ementech competition spring kits for Tanfoglio and let you know what springs are provided in this package, in this kit. So in the kit we have a number of springs. Let's get them all out so we can go through them. Open that little bag that's got the smaller springs in it. Okay, what do we have here? First up, we have the recoil spring. Now, the one we're supplying from Ementech is the 10 pound recoil spring, which is a competition recoil spring. We also have in there the hammer spring, which is also known as a main spring. And that one we're supplying is a 13 pound for the Tenfoglio. We have the competition trigger return spring, which is a lighter weight spring for your trigger return. We have the firing pin spring for Tenfoglio, which is that one there also a lighter version, competition rated. We have the sear spring, which we're going to change out in the sear cage. This is what puts pressure on your sear to engage with your hammer. We have the magazine catch spring for Tanfoglio, which is that one. We're going to change that out. We have the firing pin safety spring, which is that one. It's a lighter spring. And we also have finally the extractor spring, which we're going to put in the firearm and replace the original. So with all those springs ready to go, we're going to start to put this firearm back together. And I suggest we start with the top end. Let's grab that slide. Now, in there we've got a firing pin that goes, we've got a firing pin stop plate, we've got the block with the original spring in it, 
and I think that's all we need for now. I'm going to show you how to put this together. So let's first change out that spring. There's the original one we're taking out. Put that aside. We'll keep that as a spare and we'll replace it with the Ementech spring. And we also have the original firing pin spring, which we're going to put aside and we're going to use the Ementech one. Now, because this firearm has a firing pin block in it, we need to assemble this correctly so that it works. So first things first, we're going to drop the firing pin block into the firearm. Now with the muzzle pointing towards you and the slide upside down, we want to drop that in with the opening facing to the left. So the spring's in the bottom of it, so the spring goes down into the body of the slide with the opening of that firing pin block facing left, just like that. Make sure it doesn't turn around. Now to install the firing pin, you will see that there's a cutout in the firing pin. You want that facing towards you. So we can insert the spring and the firing pin and we'll get to a point where it'll stop. We press down on the firing pin block and that should allow it to go in just like that. Now we need our firing pin stop plate over the top and hold that firing pin in and push down on the firing pin and you can slide that stop plate in and it'll click. And that's correct. There is a way to test this, make sure the block is working. So if you press down on the firing pin, it will protrude from the breech face of the slide. And if you press down on the block, it locks it and it does not protrude. That tells you your block is working correctly. And in production division, that needs to be fully functional to pass um, gun check. Okay, we're now going to put the extractor back in the firearm and we're going to swap the spring out with the Ementech spring. There's the original, put that away. The way we do this is we drop the spring into the correct position and we slot the extractor into position, push back on the front of it and push into the slide where that spring tension is. And we want to hammer that pin that holds it in from the bottom, just like that. So we get it all nice and ready. We've got to put some pressure on that to hold it back and pressure there and we want to give it a good whack to get it going the first time. There we go, and I can feel it's taken up. We're just going to guide that in. There we go. We test the extractor tension to make sure it's all working. Yep, it's perfect. That's really, really nice. We're pretty much done with the slide. We'll just put some stuff back in it. The barrel goes in through the front. We can put that bushing back in there. And just before we put the guide rod back on, we're going to replace that original spring with the Ementech recoil spring. There we go. Just slot it in, compress it, and it comes to rest at the foot of the barrel. That slide is ready to go. Okay, now we're going to change the sear spring. We've got to remove the old sear spring out of the cage that holds the sear into the sear cage. The way we do that is we just push that pin out Either way, make sure you don't lose that. And when we pull the punch out, it all comes apart. There's the sear and there's the sear spring original one. We'll put that aside. That's our spare part now. To put it all back together, I'm going to cheat a little bit. So that sear goes in through the bottom like that. We want to take that pin and put it through the body of the cage and just through one side of the sear, not all the way through. We don't want it shooting all the way through. Just like that. Now we're going to take our new Ementech sear spring, which is a competition sear spring, and our brand new Ementech sear spring tool, which you can buy from one of our dealers online. It's got a nice neodymium magnet in it, and it has a little hole in there to accommodate the sear spring. And we're just going to load it up into the resting position so we can install it just like that so once that's in position like that we can install it into our cage we want the long leg facing forward and it's got bottoming out lips so you can just put the long leg in the slot rotate it into position push the pin through There we go, and we can remove the tool. Make sure that pin goes all the way through both sides. There we go. Check the tension on the sear, make sure it's working. Everything's in the correct position. We've done the cage. 
We're now going to do the magazine release spring. Now inside the magazine release, there is a little plunger and a little spring. I'm going to remove them. And this is what holds it all together. So I'm going to try to get that out. There we go. So there's the plunger. It's tiny. And there's the little spring. We're going to remove the spring and replace it with the Emantec spring. Another spare part. There's the Emantec version. Slot that in and put the plunger back in there. Now how this works is this is what holds your mag release in and also the plunger that puts pressure underneath your trigger bar and that pretty much sits in there and the way we install this is we've got to compress all of that whilst we have it compressed push this in from the top and remove the punch that's compressing it and this will slot into position with pressure from that spring holding it in there and once it's all in the gun it stays there. So let's get this ready to go. Make sure that's all the way in there. We're now going to install this mag release and it's ambidextrous. So it can go in either side. So put it in the frame of the firearm. Grab your punch and compress that spring and plunger that are in there. At the same time, you're holding that mag release in position and you want to install this with the foot going down and put pressure on that. What you're actually putting pressure on here is on the punch. You want to put pressure down like that and then let that punch come out. As I pull that punch out, this shaft is going to fill the space and you hear that click. Now that is installed properly and we know it's done properly because we have spring tension on the mag release and the foot has also got spring tension on it. This is what lifts your trigger bar so that needs to work. We can now put our trigger bar back in the way that goes in is with that ledge facing forward towards the muzzle of the firearm and the square back face towards the back. Drop your trigger in and your trigger bar. There we go. Now we've got to replace the original trigger return spring with the Emantec Competition trigger return spring. Okay, so we're going to install the trigger and the trigger bar. We've inserted them in and we've put our trigger pin into the frame and only into the side one side of the trigger we don't want it protruding into that space we just want it holding the two bits together so we don't have to hold it to line it up now we can focus on putting our trigger return spring in and again i'm going to cheat with the new trigger return spring tool from Emantec. here is the Emantec trigger return spring and the way we install it is just push it in between the jaws like that the long leg on the left the short leg on the right what we want to do is get that long leg into that slot in the frame the short leg goes into the trigger and by forcing it in it opens up the legs of the trigger return spring and that's what puts the tension on the trigger for it to return so with the tool it's quite easy to do we put the short leg in position, the long leg is in position, we push down, I'm going to hold it all in position, and I'm just going to tap that pin in. And that's it, I can pretty much remove the tool now, and as you can see, the spring is in the correct position, and we've just got to send the pin home. And that's as quick and as easy as it is with the tool. It is very doable without the tool, but for people who are just starting in the sport, and just beginning to get the knowledge of their firearm and how it works and they want to do some upgrades, the tool is very handy. Don't record this. I'm going to hit it hard. There we go. Done. So that's all working. We've put the Emantec trigger return spring in. Okay, we're going to install the Emantec hammer spring or mainspring now. We just drop that into the frame and the hammer goes the hammer strut goes into the spring the disconnector goes over the trigger bar and we press down on that and we line the holes up and we try and get that pin in to hold it all together bit fiddly there we go wiggle that hammer and we can push that pin home almost push down on it there we go and now the hammer pin pin which we drop in from the top through that small hole to hold the hammer pin in 
There we go, look at that. We dropped it in the hole and send it home. So to put the sear cage back in, because we've replaced the sear spring, we just want to lift that leg up and put it up on top of the cage. Mm -hmm. So it's not in the way for the safety to go through the hole because this is the leg that locks the safety in position. That'll work, we've got it on the wrong side, but that'll work just fine. Put the sear cage in the frame and push down and back to cock the hammer and that'll put it in the correct position. Grab your safety, push it through, and that's in. And make sure you drop that leg into the correct position to hold that safety in the correct spot. And that's pretty much done. We can now put the slide back on. Put the slide stop in. Feels a lot better double action. We'll put the grips back on quickly and then we'll do a test with the gauge and see how much better the double action is. Initially it was just on 10 pounds and that feels a lot better now. Okay, let's get this in the vise. Okay, let's go to pounds. That is seven pounds. Let's do that again. And seven again. That is a huge difference. That's three, three and a half pounds less on the double action. The gun feels super smooth. Recoil characteristics will be a lot better with the spring kit installed. And I hope you enjoyed that video. If you have any questions, comment below. Hit us up and we can answer anything that needs answering. Thank you for watching. Hit us up on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Come have a look at what we got up there. And thanks again. Cheers.